könnte.
Gary Kachago, ADS, the Deputy President of the Party of the The Speaker of the National Assembly forwarded the following document to the Senate, made the record of proceedings in the National Assembly, and the evidence against in support of the impeachment motion. One, a copy of the notice of special motion, and an affidavit of the Honorable Ekomas Mwengi Mfuse, for the WMP dated the 6th of September 2024, and received on the 27th of September 2024, running from page 40 to 42. Two, electronic evidence related to the special motion contained in the flashes. Three, other papers of passage. Statement by the clerk of the National Assembly on the extension of public participation issued on the 4th of October 2024. Public participation advertisement of the 5th of October 2024. Big standard Saturday Nation newspaper and, and standard newspaper. Public participation reports tabled on the 8th of October 2024. Response to the notice of special motion from His Excellency the Deputy President received on the 8th of October 2024 at 4 p.m. Electronic evidence by His Excellency the Deputy President relating to the special motion contained in the flash list. For the paper for Tuesday the 8th of October 2024, communication from the Chair, number 049 of 2023, issued on Tuesday the 8th of October 2024, and certified answer and votes and proceedings for the 8th of October 2024. Now, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Article 145, subsection 3, A of the Constitution, and standing on the 78th one of the Senate. At the sitting of the Senate held on Wednesday, the 9th of October 2024, the charges against His Excellency the Deputy President as containing the motion of impeachment by the National Assembly were read out to the assembled Senate. Honorable Senators, at this juncture, allow me to remind you of the mandate of the Senate in relation to the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President as provided for an Article 150. 145 of the Constitution are played together with standing with us at the aid of the Senate. In particular, Article 150 of the Constitution states as follows The Deputy President may be removed from office A. 
on the ground of physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of the office, or B, on impeachment on the ground of a gross violation of a provision of this Constitution or any other law. Or two, where there are serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime at the national or international level. Or three, for gross misconduct. Two, the provisions of Articles 144 and 145 related to the move. Standing Order 78, Part 1, the Senate Constitution of the Standing Order of the Senate, provide for the procedure to be followed in the hearing and determination of the proposed removal of office by impeachment of the Deputy President. Specifically, Article 135 of the Constitution of Standing Order 78, one of the Senate, provide that the Senate may, by resolution, appoint a special committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter. Honorable Senators will report that at the sitting of the Senate, held on Wednesday the 9th of October 2024, the motion for establishment of a special committee was deemed to have been withdrawn pursuant to the standing of the Senate. This therefore paved the way for the investigation on the proposed removal from office by impeachment of his Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, to be held in place. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, by way of status update, Pursuant to Rules 4A, Senator Tarimon, attention. By way of status update, pursuant to Rules 4A and 6 of the Rules of Procedure, when considering the proposed removal of the Deputy President, in Berlin, the Senate invited the Deputy President to appear and be represented before the Senate during its investigation. The Senate further invited the Deputy President, if he so chooses, to appear before the Senate to file an answer to the charges to the Office of the Clerk of the Senate by 5 p.m. on Monday, 15th of October 2024, setting out the following. One, the Deputy President responds to the particulars of the allegations. Two, the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person, by advocate or in person and by advocate. Three, the names and addresses of the persons to be put as witnesses, defamed, and witness statements containing summary evidence to be presented by such witnesses before the Senate, and lastly, any other evidence to be lied. Pursuant to Rules 4B and 7 of the Rules of Procedure, when considering the proposed removal of the Deputy President Lenny, the Senate notified the National Assembly of the date for the commencement of the investigation and invited the National Assembly to designate members of the National Assembly who shall appear and represent the National Assembly before the Senate during the investigation. The National Assembly was further invited, if he so chooses, to appear before the Senate, to file to the Office of the Clerk of the Senate by 5 p.m. on Monday, the 10th of October 2024, setting out documentation of the following. One, designating members of the National Assembly, if any, who shall attend and represent the National Assembly in the proceedings before the Senate. Two, indicating the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person, by advocate, or in person and by advocate. Three, indicating the names and addresses of the persons to be called as witnesses, if any, and witness statements containing a summary of the evidence to be presented for such witnesses before the Senate. And lastly, specifying in other evidence to be relied on. Now, Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, on 14th of October 2024, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response reference S reference number SW stroke PET stroke 153 stroke VOEM stroke 01-2024 and dated the 14th of October 2024 to the invitation to appear issued to the Deputy President from a senior company advocate who indicated that his excellency the Deputy President had appointed a firm to represent him in the proceeding before the Senate and that the Deputy President would also appear the letter also indicated the list of counsel representing His Excellency, the Deputy President, and the list of witnesses for the Deputy President. Similarly, on 14th of October 2024, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response reference from the NA stroke CAN stroke post of 2024 into bracket 562 and dated 14th of October 2024 to the invitation to appear issued with the National Assembly from the clerk of the National Assembly, indicating that 
Mrs. GMP Advocate LLP, have been appointed to represent the National Assembly and that the National Assembly would appear impartial and by advocates. The letter also indicated the members of the National Assembly representing the National Assembly in these proceedings and the witnesses to the National Assembly. Good procedure when considering the proposed move from office of the Deputy President of Plenary on Monday, 14th of October 2024, the clerk of the Senate furnished each party with the documentation filed by, other, by the other party in accordance with Rule 6 and 7 of the Rules of Procedure. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, the hearing program, which has been presented to today's order, Assisted by uh, a team of uh, our young colleagues, 
Mr. Alex Bayer, legal counsel. Mr. Elias Boma, legal counsel. Mr. Eric Moyuki, legal counsel. Mr. Boniface Mawira, legal counsel. And Ms. Joan Geruto, legal counsel. From the National Assembly, we have the Honorable Ochete Amolo, Senior Counsel. We have the Honorable John Itonga Bugara. We have the Honorable Samuel Chekonga. We have the Honorable John McCallie. And we also have the Honorable Zamzam Mohammed. I submit, Mr. Speaker. Similarly now, the Vice Council to the Excellency, the Director of the Chapel, the the Deputy President of the Public Attorney, to introduce the legal team to the Excellency, the Deputy President, by stating the full name and his mission from each possible Council members. Mweshimua Speaker, Honorable Senators, the legal team representing His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, who is present in this August House, are as follows. Myself, Paul Muite, Elisha Ongoya, Tom Macharia, Swanya Victor Ogeto, Dego Anjiro, John Jomo, Faith Waigua, Amos Kisilu, George Wandati, George Sakiba, Andrew Muge, Eric Naibei, Mrs. Julia Omwamba, and Mr. Willis Echeza. Mr. Speaker, we will be raising an issue about one of the members of the legal team read out this morning as representing the National Assembly. I thank you and I thank honorable members. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Senate, I welcome the National Assembly and his team. His Excellency regarding the Shadow PGS, the Deputy President of the Party of the and his team, members of the public and the media to the Senate and to these proceedings. Now, as you are aware, at the 118 of the Constitution of the Race Parliament, we conduct this business in an open manner. And that the sittings and those of the securities shall be open, shall be open to the public. The hearing of the proposed removal from office of the Deputy President as soon as the 145 of the Constitution, standing for the Senate 8 and the second chamber to the standing order of the Senate is a matter that has been already commenced public papers. The Senate in this particular hearing has facilitated members of the public who are interested in the proceeding to access the galleries. However, I draw the attention of the members of the public who are seated in the galleries to rule 8 to rule 28 of the speaker's rules, which state as follows. Visitors in the gallery shall remain seated, shall not allow, comment on, make signs, eat, sleep, read books, newspapers, or other material except the other paper for the day, or create any discussions. I request the members of the public to observe that for safety. Any member of the public who contributes to the speaker's room will be inviting stand action against them, which includes expulsion from the prisons of parliament. The office of the clerk of the Senate is directed to ensure compliance with the speaker's room. Honorable Senator, ladies and gentlemen, finally, I now invite the clerk to read the particulars of the allegations of Dennis and Excellency regarding the Shadow of the Deputy President of the Republic. 
Uh, my name is De Wanjiro, and perhaps before we proceed to the session, uh, my learned uh, senior counsel, Paul Moite, did raise an issue that we have an objection in terms of the appearances of legal counsel appearing for the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, our objection is in line with the conduct of this House and the records bears as witness that we also have, um, we'll also be relying on an authority in our objection. Mr. Speaker, sir, we are raising an objection to the appearance of, senior, of my senior advocate, legal counsel, James Orengo, to represent the National Assembly in these proceedings. And this is the basis of our objection briefly, that my learned friend, senior James Orengo, is a full-time serving state officer as per Article 260 of the Constitution, as read together with Section 26, subsection 2 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, which bars a full-time state officer from engaging in meaningful uh, employment. Mr. Speaker, sir, it will be prejudicial to our client if this house was to allow my learned friend, senior James Orengo, to represent the National Assembly in these proceedings. Mr. Speaker, sir, just recently, this house, which is a house of record, we bear as witness that during the impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Kisi County, the county assembly attempted to appear by, an, by legal counsel represented by one honorable sorrow. An objection was raised by my learned friend, Senator Charge, which objection was sustained by this house. Mr. Speaker, sir, our objection is further premised in the high court decision that is High Court uh, Constitutional Petition 204 of 2019, where Justice Ogola barred His Excellency the Governor of Siaya County from representing the then Director General of Kenya Port Authority, one Daniel Maduk. The judgment is before this honorable, court, uh, honorable house that a person who is engaged in full-time employment cannot then purport to appear and represent a party before this assembly. It will raise serious conflict of interests. The same will prejudice our client and it's also in violation of clear provisions of the law as cited. In that respect, Mr. Speaker, sir, we invite you to uphold our objection before the charges are read out to, the, um, uh, to our client. Mr. Speaker, sir, in this ruling that I have just cited, the court was of the view that a person who is engaged in, uh, in full-time engagement as a state officer cannot and is barred from representing a party in a private capacity. We so beseech you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to uphold our objection. I am most humble.
has taken to it. And therefore, we allow the cloud to make the charges. For anything else, I will allow the uh, Council for the National Assembly to respond, and therefore, I will make a move. And then we will take it from I am most of life, Mrs. Gibson. Propose removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency regarding the Shagra EPH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Particulars of the allegations. Your Excellency regarding the Shagra EPH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Please get this time. and 
protection of the marginalized and good governance. B, to respect and uphold the representation of Kenya's multi-ethnic and culturally diverse society through the promotion of equality and affording equal opportunities to all Kenyans in appointments to the public service and allocation of public resources. And C, to make, promote, and implement public policy decisions that do not discriminate against any Kenyan based on conscience, ethnic or social origin, language, or birth. However, on diverse states, throughout the last two years, His Excellency Rigadi Kashako has persistently made utterances threatening to discriminate, exclude, and unlawfully deny sections of the people of Kenya and regions of the Republic of Kenya equal opportunities for public service appointments and allocation of public resources. Besides, the utterances are highly inflammatory and insightful and significantly undermine national unity and the peaceful coexistence of Kenya's diverse communities. To illustrate, A, sometime in 2023, at a public forum in Kajiado County, within the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Rigati Gashelko made highly inflammatory and insightful public pronouncements to the effect that the government of Kenya is a company and that the allocation of government development projects and public sector jobs are based on shares determined by how the populace of the various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general election. Specifically, he stated as follows, quote, a government is like a company, there is shareholding. Kunawale who have invested a lot of shares, Kunawale wameweka kidogo, Kunawale wameka taa, lakini wote ni wa Kenya. So ndiyo tukasema, kama wewe umeenda kupanda mahindi, ama wacha nipeane example ya ngombe, kwa sababu niko kajiado. Wewe, huko na ngombe yako, ya maziwa, hiyo ngombe imezaliwa ikiwa jao, umeichunga vizuri, umepatia majani, umenumulia daily, umepatia chumbi, umepeleka kwa madisho, umepatia maji, imeza, imeanza kukamudiwa. Wewe, unatakiwa kwanza ukue mtu ya kwanza kukamua hiyo ngombe, hakuyo maziwa. End of course. His Excellency Vigadi Gachewa emphasizes Yes, it is. 
regarding the table continued the insightful and divisive utterances at yet another forum where he stated as follows. and promote ethnic balkanization of the Republic of Kenya. C. 
falsely alluded to an existing government policy to discriminate and marginalize the populace of the regions and tribes that may have fought for the current administration in the 2022 general elections. Your Excellency, regarding the chapter, how do you plead ground one, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground two, gross violation of articles 147.1 and 152.1 of the Constitution. Article 147.1 of the Constitution provides that the Deputy President shall be the principal assistant of the President and shall deputize for the President in the execution of the President's functions. In addition, Article 152.1 of the Constitution states that the Deputy President is a member of the Cabinet. On various days throughout the last two years, His Excellency Legal Kashyapwa undermined the President and the Cabinet and the effective discharge of the national government's executive mandate by making unilateral public statements that were inconsistent with policy positions collectively adopted by the government. To illustrate, A, on or around 30th April 2024, the Cabinet passed a resolution for the evacuation of people residing along the Nairobi River. B, shortly after that, His Excellency Miguel Gashelbo made a public statement opposing the Nairobi River riparian evacuation orders, which the Cabinet had sanctioned for public safety and climate change mitigation. His Excellency Miguel Gashelbo made contradictory public statements despite being a member of the cabinet and being assigned the function of superintending the Nairobi River by Fabian evacuation order. In addition, His Excellency Gary Gashapo has on several occasions throughout the last two years made public statements from the people the president of political matters of governance and the exercise of the president's functions as a symbol of national unity. To illustrate, in March 2023, at a public forum in the Nyanza region, the President said Kenya belongs to all, notwithstanding how people voted in the 2022 general elections, and that he will ensure the government does not discriminate against anyone. However, His Excellency Vigali Gashago, speaking after the President at another public forum, contradicted him by saying that Kenya is a company in which the provision of government services is based on shares. B. His Excellency Ricardo Gashapo has made numerous other utterances of public forums where he publicly restates the divisive narrative that Kenya is a company in which the rights of citizens are based on shares determined, determined by how various ethnic communities voted in the 2022 general elections. His Excellency Ricardo Gashapo's unilateral divisive and insightful public statements are impeachable offenses to the extent that a they undermine the effective discharge of the national government's executive mandate b they violate the doctrine of collective responsibility c they are equivalent to insubordination of the president which is incompatible with his constitutional status as a principal assistant to the president of the republic of kenya your Excellency, the Gandhi Gashapo, how do you plead to ground two, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground three, gross violation of Article 6, 2, 10, 2, A, 174, 186, 1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution, that is undermining the commission. Article 10, 2, A of the Constitution provides that devolution is a fundamental national value and principle of governance. In addition, Article 6.2 of the Constitution provides that governments at the county and national levels are distinct and interdependent and shall conduct their mutual relations based on consultation and cooperation. These provisions are supplemented by Article 189.1 of the Constitution, which provides that governments at each level shall perform and exercise their, function, their powers in a manner that respects the functional and institutional integrity of government at the other level. Under paragraph 7a of part 2 of the fourth schedule to the constitution, county governments are responsible for trade development, 
and markets as an exclusive function. Moreover, the Deputy President chairs the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, an essential organ for consultation between the two levels of government. On or around 20th September 2024, His Excellency began the Kashambo, recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic, unlawfully interfered with the running of Nairobi City County Government by holding a public rally in which he incited citizens against lawful directives of the Nairobi City County Government on the planning and relocation of markets. Further, His Excellency the Gatikashev publicly disparaged the leadership of the Nairobi City County Government and its decisions. Moreover, His Excellency the Gatikashev has interfered with the proper discharge of public government's constitutional functions regarding alcohol control and regulation. His Excellency the Gatikashev's insightful and demeaning public statements and conduct are impeachable offenses to the extent that A, they undermine devolution, B, they undercut the functional and institutional integrity of county governments, C, they unjustifiably verify and ridicule the leadership of county governments, especially the Nairobi City County Government. Consequently, His Excellency Brigadier Gashagwa has grossly violated Article 6 to just a minute. I realize uh, what you're reading was fairly old. His Excellency, the Deputy President, if you may wait, you may sit and when taking the lead, you may stand. No, Mr. Speaker, let me stand. You may proceed, Clark. Repeat. Consequently, His Excellency, the Deputy Gashapa, has grossly violated that it was 6 to 10 to a 174. 186, 1 and 189, 1 of the Constitution, as well as the fourth schedule to the Constitution. The Excellency, regarding the Shepherd, how do you feel to ground three? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground four, gross violation of Article 161 of the Constitution, that is, undermining the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Article 161 of the Constitution provides that the judiciary shall be subject only to this Constitution and the law and shall not be subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. Many international law instruments, treaties, and principles require the guarantee of the judiciary's independence and require all government officers and institutions to respect and observe it. In 2023, His Excellency regarding the Shango recklessly unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and the need to respect, protect, and uphold the independence of the judiciary, made a scathing public attack against the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor, judge of the High Court of Kenya, and falsely threatened to file a petition for the removal of the said judge in gross violation of Article 160 of the Constitution. The Honorable Judge had presided over a case in which His Excellency regarded the Shepherd was a party and had, in the lawful performance of her judicial function, ordered His Excellency regarded the Shepherd to forfeit to the state the sum of Kenya Shillings 200 million, which she had found to be proceeds of corruption and money laundering. His Excellency regarded the Shepherd's public attacks against the judge are impeachable offenses to the extent that they undermine the functional and decisional independence of judges. Your Excellency, Regarding Ashwa, how do you plead to ground four, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground five, gross violation of articles 3, 1, 148, 5A of the Constitution, that is breach of the oath of office and allegiance. His Excellency regarding the Shepherd's actions and utterances outlined in Grounds 1, 2, 3, and 4 constitute a gross violation of Article 3, 1 of the Constitution, which requires every person to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. Further, the actions and utterances of His Excellency regarding the Shepherd grossly violate Article 148, 5A 
of the Constitution, which prescribes the oath of allegiance of the office of the Deputy President that obligates the Deputy President to obey, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and all other laws. Your Excellency, regarding the Shango, how do you plead to ground five, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. But B, serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime under national law, pursuant to Article 151 B, 2 of the Constitution. Ground six, serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Regardi Gashabo has committed crimes under Sections 13, 1A, and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. Section 13 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act provides that it is an offense for any person to use threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior where the person intends to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. The section also makes it an offense to use such words or engage in such behavior when having regard to all the circumstances, ethnic hatred is likely to be stirred up. Besides Section 62 of the National Provision and Integration Act, states that a person commits an offense when the person makes statements that are intended or are likely to stir feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. His Excellency, regarding Gashagwa's persistent, inflammatory, reckless, insightful public utterances over the last two years, the details of which are set out in grounds one, two, three, and four, establish serious reasons to believe that he has committed crimes under Section 13.1 and 62 of the National Provision and Integration Act. Your Excellency, regarding Gashagwa, how do you plead to ground six, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Round seven. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Vigali Gashagwa has committed crimes under sections 45, 1, 46, 47, A, 3, and 48, 1 of the Anti Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and sections 2, 3, 4, and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti Money Laundering Act. For the past two years, his Excellency Rigadi Gashabo has inexplicably amassed a humongous portfolio, uh, property portfolio estimated at 10 shillings 5.2 billion, primarily from proceeds of corruption and money laundering. The value of the property and wealth that His Excellency Rigadi Gashabo has acquired over the last two years is incompatible with his non legitimate income, that is, Finishing is 12 million per annum or thereabouts. His Excellency Rigadi Gashiapo has acquired the above mentioned property and wealth using his two sons, Kevin Rigadi Gashiapo, that is Kevin Gashiapo, and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, that is Keith Ikinu, and other close family members and associates as proxies. His Excellency Rigadi Gashiapo and his proxies especially the two sons, have used the following companies to massively launder money, conceal causes of crime, corruption, and benefit from mutual spending. For one, Spiritway Limited, PVT-Y2ULDMKY, date of incorporation 14 of September 2023, Shareholders, Dorcas Wandiko Rigadi, who is director for shareholders to a beneficial owner with 100 shares. Two, Fortis Viz Group Limited, PVT M K U M A K E E, date of incorporation 14th of February 2023. Shareholders, Kevin Rigadi Gashagwa with 50 shares and Keith Ikinu Rigadi, 50 shares. Three, Grand Bypass Apartments Limited, PVT-5JUZEKL8, date of incorporation 11th of January 2024.
shareholders regarding the shareholder director, John Y. Madenge of 767931, director, Peter Nyoroge Regel, uh, number 4686103, director, the Beach Resort Limited, number C159289, shareholder, one share. Four, Kuruitu Properties Limited, PVT EYUBKG83, date of incorporation 26th of April 2023, shareholders with Bingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289, a shareholder with 1,000 shares, and John Y. Malende. Number five, the Anansi Collective, BN-JRCG76AG, date of incorporation 29th of March 2021, shareholders if Ikino Regali. Six, BioVet Kenya Limited, Number CPR stroke 2009 stroke 4880, date of incorporation 10th of June 2009. Shareholders regarding the share one, 200 shares. Dorcas Wandito regarding 200 shares. Seven, Calder Creed International Limited, number CPR stroke 2015 stroke 18614. Date of incorporation 16th of April 2015. Shareholders regarding the share one, 50 shares. Dorcas Wandito Regardi, 950 shares. Eight, Cosmia Venture Limited, number PVT Q7ULE6Z, date of incorporation 26th of February 2018. Shareholders, Herman Reuter Minor, 200 shares. James Mwangi Kagoto, 50 shares. Kevin Regardi Gashabwa, 250 shares. Keith Ikinu Regardi, 50 shares. Aileen Nyanjao Washira, 250 shares. And David Kikemoy Mudamia, 200 shares. Number nine, Crystal Kenya Limited, number CPR, stock 2009, stock 4898. Date of incorporation, 12th of June, 2009. Shareholders, Kevin Regardi Gashawa, 200 shares. Keith Ikino Regardi, 200 shares. 10, Delta Merchants Limited, number CPR, stroke 2009, stroke 4874. Date of incorporation, 9th of June, 2009. Shareholders, Regardi Gashawa, 200 shares. Dorcas Wandito Regardi, 200 shares. 11, the Bingo Beach Resort Limited, number C159289, date of incorporation 5th of August 2008. Shareholders Kevin Regardi Gashagwa as director, Keith Ikino Regardi, director, estate of the deceased James Nerito Gashagwa, shareholder, 10,000 shares. 12. Regardi Gashagwa Foundation, number CLG. Dash XXFXRG, date of incorporation 11 of November 2022. Shareholders regarding the shareholder. 13. Dorcas regarding foundation number CLG dash G9FV2G, date of incorporation 19th of October 2022. Shareholders Kevin regarding the shareholder. Keith Ikino Regali, Dorcas Wadiko Regali, Nancy Wahoe Kanyele. 14, Hardland Supplies Limited, number CPR, stroke 2009, stroke 4881, date of incorporation, 11th of June 2009, shareholders, regarding the shareholder, director, as director, so shareholder with 200 shares. Dorcas Wadiko Regali, director, shareholder with 200 shares. 15, Karangi Farm Limited, number C, 94303, 
date of the corporation 25th of June 2001, shareholders regarding the shareholder as director, shareholder with 700 shares, Dorcas Wandiko Rigabi as director and shareholder with 100 shares. 16, Morani Manufacturers Limited, number PBT-8 LU7Q8GD, date of incorporation 13th of October 2021, shareholders Dorcas Wandiko Rigabi as director and shareholder, 200 shares. Keith Ikimu Rigabi, director and shareholder, 200 shares. Joshua Kalianjaki Waiganjo, director, shareholder, 600 shares. And Grace Washuka Mwangi, beneficial owner. 17, Mothers of the Land Limited, number CLG 55FD3B, date of incorporation, 1st of December 2021. Shareholders, Louisa Jerry Wanjiro, Director Stock Member, Caroline Jepkeboy Waiyaki, Director Stock Member, Lucy Jogoine Motegi, Director Stock Member, Dorcas Wanjiko Regardi, Director Stock Member. 18, Pioneer Medical Kenya Limited, number CPR Stock 2009, Stock 4910, date of incorporation 9th of June 2009, Shareholders regarding the shareholders as director, stock shareholders, 200 shares. Dorcas Wajiko regarding director and shareholder, 200 shares. 19. Rider Furniture Mark Limited. Number C141876. State of Incorporation. 8. 18th of July 2007, shareholders regarding the shareholder, director and shareholder, 500 shares, Dorcas for people regarding director and shareholder, 500 shares. 20, Royal Crimson Ventures Limited, number PVT dash LRU2QZL, date of incorporation, 26th of February 2018. Shareholders Kevin Rigadi Kashagwa as director and shareholder with 400 shares. Keith Ikino Rigadi, director and shareholder, 400 shares. And Peter Kangaki Ivaika as, as director and shareholder, 200 shares. 21. Technical Supplies and Services Limited, Kenya Limited. Delivery the Corporation, 6th of June 2009. Shareholders regarding the shareholders, director, the shareholder with 400 shares. Sorry, I'll say that again. 21 technical supplies and services, Kenya Limited, CPR uh, 2009, stock 4895. Uh, date of incorporation is 6th of June. Shareholders are uh, regarding the shareholders, directors, or shareholders of 400 shares, and Francis Moshiri Wangwo, director. And 22, Wamunyoro Investments Limited, C, number C, 9367093670, date of incorporation 23rd of April 2001. Shareholders, Kevin regarding the Shagwa, director, stock shareholder with one share, and Keith Ikino regarding director, stock shareholder with one share. To illustrate, in November 2023, Crystal Kenya Limited, number nine in the above table, a proxy company of His Excellency regarding the Shagwa, purchased Outspan Hotel situated at nearing municipality block stroke one, stroke. 1669 from Abadea Safari Hotels for Kenya shillings 525 million. The directors of Crystal Kenya Limited are the sons of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, namely Kevin Gashagwa and Keith Ikino. Sometime in August 2024, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa publicly admitted that his family had acquired this property. B. 
In November 2023, Kevin Kashyapwa and Keith Dibini, the boxes of His Excellency regarding Kashyapwa, acquired Treetops Lodge, a high-end hotel situated in Nyeri County. Sometime in August 2024, His Excellency regarding Kashyapwa publicly admitted that his family has acquired this property. C. His Excellency Vigadi Gashabwa and his forces also acquired Olive Gardens Hotel and Queen's Gate Service Departments in Nairobi. D. His Excellency Vigadi Gashabwa acquired the Vivo Beach Resort in Kilifi County. E. His Excellency Vigadi Gashabwa acquired a parcel of land known as Rogoro Kiamari, Rogoro Stroke, Kiamariga Stroke 1223 in Madera East constituency where he constructed a helicopter landing facility. F, His Excellency Rikazi Gashagwa acquired approximately 40 acres of land in Kampuret in Kamburaini in Nyeri County. G, His Excellency Rikazi Gashagwa acquired 80 acres of land in Meru County. H, His Excellency Rikazi Gashagwa acquired a daily farm in Nyandarwa County. I, additionally, his Excellency Vigadi Gashabwa used his office of Deputy President to exert influence and connive with unscrupulous Ministry of Lands officials to issue an, allot an allotment letter to Amunyoro Investments Limited, a company that he owns, to acquire LR209 stroke 12077 and LR90923 situated at the Bakasi in Nairobi, whose value is estimated at Kenya shillings 1.5 billion or thereabouts. After that, this company used the fraudulently acquired documents to support a court case at the expense of the legitimate owner of the property. J. Moreover, companies associated with His Excellency Vigari Gashabwa and his proxies were involved in the cancer Kenya shillings 3.7 billion irregular procurement of malaria nets that put the lives of millions of Kenyans at risk. K. In addition, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has used the office of Deputy President to corruptly influence unnecessary and expensive renovation of his official residence in Karen and Mombasa, driving into millions of shillings. In essence, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has chosen personal comfort, extreme luxury, and propriety at the expense of service delivery to the people of Kenya. And images of some of the properties that His Excellency Rigadi Gashabo has acquired from proceeds of corruption, influence peddling, and money laundering have been provided and relate to the following. One, three tops. Hotel located in Nyeri, in Nyeri. Two, Outspan Hotel located in Abadea, Rangers. Three, Olive Gardens Hotel, Agnes Project Road. Four, the, P the Pingo Beach Resort. Additionally, His Excellency the Gardner Shankar has the following proxy companies to trade with the office he holds. A, Agrobrick Investments Limited it is a private limited company incorporated in Kenya on 28 May 2017 and a certificate number PBT RXUP6E. The company deals in building and construction. The company's directors or shareholders are A. Rudani Mayukumar Mahendra Bai and B. Patel and Kishkumar. Has moved by a Kenya and a Kenyan national. Okay, the company operates a bank account number with help for data protection reasons at CDN Bank, opened on 19 February 2022, with the company directors as the account signatories. On 18 October 2022, Bafika Nadalal Irani was added as an account signatory and given the full mandate to operate the account. Bafika Nagalal Hirani is a proxy of His Excellency regarding the travel. On 23rd January 2023, 
the company account received a transfer of Kenya shillings 47 million, 15,367 shillings and 75 cents from the executive office of the deputy president. The payment was supported by a notification of award letter, reference number ODP stroke ADM uh, dot, uh, ADM dot one stroke 57 VO dot, dot four bracket 70 dated 16 December 2022 from the office of the deputy president to Agrobrick Investment Limited for the proposed refurbishment of deputy president's official residence at current at a cost of Kenya shillings 55 million five hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and twenty. B payment voucher of Kenya shillings fifty five million one hundred and was received on tenth January twenty twenty three as the first interim payment in respect to the contract ODP dash RT dash zero zero one sorry ODP stroke RT stroke 001-2022-2023. See an agreement letter dated 22nd December 2022 between Office of Deputy President and Agro Brief Investment Limited for the proposed renovation of Deputy President's official residence in Karen. Bavika Nathalai Hirani signed the document as a director of Agro Brief Investment Limited. On 23rd January 2023, the funds were suspiciously transferred through a transfer of Kenya shillings 45 million to a related entity, that is, Vagiani Enterprises Limited. Shockingly, the account had been dormant for around nine months before it received the payment from the Office of the Deputy President, adding to the reasonable suspicion that it was a special purpose vehicle siphon funds for His Excellency Rigali Gashawa. B. Dosona Events Limited. This is an events management company that was registered on 30th of October 2012 and a certificate number CPR stroke 2012 stroke The company directors are A. Esther Wanjiro Jenga and B. Cecilia Mudoni Jenga. The company operates two accounts at the SBM Bank, which it opened in 2015. The company's directors are account signatories. Here, Juhona Itata was also introduced as an account signatory and is the sole account operator, pointing to the likelihood that is the beneficial owner. Between 1st January 2024 and 11th July 2024, the account at SBM Bank received a total of 100 million shillings, 262,821.43 cents from the office of the deputy president, characterized by the receipt of multiple transfers. On 2nd of July 2024, the deputy president's office paid Lusona Events Limited, part of the above mentioned proceeds of corruption and money laundering, in eight transactions in a single day as follows. 2nd of July, 1st, 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 2,946,900. 2nd, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 4,806,639 shillings. Finally, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 4,679,000. 130 shillings. Fourthly, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 2,995,450 shillings. Fifth, on 2nd of July 2024, the amount of 3,374,400 shillings. Sixthly, on 2nd of July, Five million four hundred and fifty-one thousand nine hundred and twelve shillings and forty cents. 
or seven on second of July twenty twenty four, the amount of three million five hundred and eighty two thousand five hundred and thirty six that's six shillings and fifty cents. Number eight, second of July twenty twenty four, the amount of three million eight hundred and forty thousand six hundred and thirty five shillings and sixty cents. A substantial portion of the Kenya shillings, 100 million, 242,821.43 cents, was used for luxurious, largess, and unnecessary expenditure for carpets, etc., laid down for the deputy president's functions. Some of the funds were utilized as follows A. Ian Vitata made Kenya shillings. 22,800,000 in cash withdrawal, withdrawals. Some of the withdrawals were declared as cash to pay and disclosed beneficiaries. It was suspicious why they preferred cash payments as opposed to bank transfers. B. Penishing 4 million transferred to a law firm. C. Penishing 26,993,350. Investment in fixed term deposits as follows. One, on 27th of May 2024, Kenya shillings 9,993,350. Two, on 11th July 2024, Kenya shillings 17 million. The utilization of funds was reasonably believed to be an act of corruption and money laundering, as most of the money was withdrawn in cash rather than bank transfers, which is a custom for huge payments. His Excellency regarding Ashadwa is reasonably suspected to be the principal beneficiary of these dubious transactions. C. St. Nicholas Rehabilitation and Industrial Training Institute Limited. The company was incorporated on 8th of April 2021 under registration number PVT AAA CM04. It deals with student rehabilitation and industrial training, training at St. Nicholas Rehabilitation Center and Psychiatry Hospital. The sole company director is Nicholas Mugambi Maindi. The company operates an account at Equity Bank, opened on 18th August 2017, with the company director as the sole account signatory. Between 1st March 2024 and 5th June 2024, the account received a total of Kenya shillings 21 million 60,000 from the office from the office of the deputy president. The funds were suspiciously utilized as follows. A. Kenya shillings 2 million was, a, was allegedly used to purchase a white Toyota Prado from Umarali Motors Limited for Kenya shillings 8.5 million. B. Another Kenya shillings 4 million was suspiciously transferred to Nicholas Maingi's account. A cash trade in the personal account revealed that upon receipt of the funds, Nicholas made a transfer of Kenya shillings 4 million 660,000 to Umarali Motors Limited on 21st March 2024. The purported payment to Umarali Motors Limited using two routes raises reasonable suspicion of corruption and money laundering. Further, prior to receipt of the two payments from the office of the deputy president, the account was transacting in minimal accounts, raising suspicions that the entire transaction was upon which used by His Excellency regarding Ashago to siphon public funds. The payment scheme used typifies money laundering transactions. From the matters outlined in the preceding part, uh, in the preceding parts, it is presently clear that there are serious reasons to believe that His Excellency regarding the Shago, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, using his state office, has committed gross economic crimes, namely conflict of interest, abuse of office, conspiracy to commit crimes under A. Sections 45.1A, 46. 47A3 and 481 of the Anti Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and B, sections 2, 
3, 4, and 7 of the Four Seeds of Crime and Anti Money Government Act. Your Excellency, regarding the shadow, how do you plead to count 7? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <coughs> serious reasons to believe that His Excellency regarding Ashado has committed crimes under Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. His Excellency regarding Ashado has continuously misled members of the public through false, malicious, divisive, and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. To illustrate, sometime, a, sometime in January 2024, His Excellency regarding the Shabon made a sensational but false accusation that Honorable Justice Esther Maina, judge the head of Kenya, had engaged in corruption. He publicly said he would present a petition for the removal of the said judge, which, has not, which he has not done to date, leading to the inevitable conclusion that he knew his allegations were false. On or about 26th of June 2024, His Excellency regarding the Shabon, recklessly and unmindful of the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic and his membership of the National Security Council, both being positions that require one to be a discreet and tempered leader, especially during moments of national crisis, addressed Kenyans on live television in Mombasa County and publicly made sensational statements against the National Intelligence Service, an essential national security order, its director and officers. The following is an excerpt of part of the speech. I quote, the director general of the National Intelligence Service, Nurdin Haji, was a junior officer in the National Intelligence Service before he was appointed as DPP. When he was appointed to the office of the Director General, because of his inferiority complex, he chased away all the people who were senior to him when he was in the service, therefore crippling the capacity of that service and making it dysfunctional. Three directors were chased away and reassigned to desk jobs in ministries across government. Thirteen assistant directors, men and women with proven track record of intelligence collection and analysis, were removed from the National Intelligence Service, leaving a shell and a clueless director general who has no capacity to run the organization. And that is why the security sector was caught off guard by the intensity, the anger of the Kenyan people, the agitation of the Kenyan people, the resilience of the Kenyan people. End of quote. Your Excellency, regarding the shadow, how do you plead to ground eight, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. But C, gross misconduct, pursuant to Article 151b3 of the Constitution. Ground nine, gross misconduct, that is public attacks on National Security Intelligence Service and its officers. The first gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is, quote, very unpleasant, disgusting, or very rude. This is from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. Therefore, public attacks against an essential national security order in circumstances that require one to be discreet and tempered constitute gross misconduct. On or around 26th of June, 2024, his Excellency regarding Ashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, and mindful of the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and his membership to the National Security Council, both being positions that require a leader to be strict and tempered, especially during moments of national crisis, addressed Kenyans on live television in Mombasa County and made a scathing attack the National Intelligence Service, an essential national security program. His Excellency regarding the Shabwa extended the extremely reckless personal attacks to the Director General of the institution. With the unprecedented acts, His Excellency regarding the Shabwa acted in a manner that is incompatible with the high quality and dignified status 
of the Office of the Deputy President and member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council. The attacks against the National Intelligence Service and its Director General constitute gross misconduct and an impeachable offense to the extent that A, they are incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the Office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. B, they undermine national security from both internal and external points of view. C, they are incompatible with the effective discharge of the delicate and sensitive mandate of the National Intelligence Service. D, they have the potential, given the circumstances prevailing in the country at the time, to significantly diminish public confidence in, their, in the viability of the Kenyan state and its ability to protect the lives and properties of its citizens. E, they go against the constitutionally prescribed all the validities of the Office of the Deputy President under Article 148.5a of the Constitution, which requires the Deputy President to obey, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and all other laws. Your Excellency, regarding the Chairman, how do you plead to Ground 9, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground 10, gross misconduct and insubordination. As stated in Ground 9, the first gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is very unpleasant, disgusting, very rude, is from the Oxford and first learners to children. Therefore, open or public insubordination of the President, who is the head of state and government under our constitution and framework, is gross misconduct. As stated in the preceding parts, Article 147 of the Constitution designates the Deputy President as the principal assistant of the President, who shall deputize for the President in the execution of the President's functions. His Excellency, regarding the Shepherd, has persistently undermined, demeaned, and committed insubordination instead of assisting the President in executing the state executive mandate. Instead, he has opted to run a smear campaign against the Presidency for political expediency. Further, whereas Article 147.2 of the Constitution requires the Deputy President to perform the functions conferred by the Constitution and any other functions that the President may assign, His Excellency regarding the Shelba is openly supercharging the state's efforts in agriculture, including the coffee, tea, sugar, and milk sectors, which the President tasked him to oversee. To illustrate, A, His Excellency regarding the Shepherd has connived with cartels in the tea sector to block the Kenya Tea Development Agency from implementing guaranteed minimum returns that would benefit smallholder tea farmers. B, His Excellency regarding the Shepherd has influenced his family members, allies, associates, and proxies, and proxies to take control of a local cooperative society name with help in Madeira, which they are financially hemorrhaging. Your Excellency, regarding the Shepherd, how do you plead to ground 10, guilty, or not guilty? Not guilty. Ground 11, gross misconduct, that is bullying, as stated in ground 9, the first gross misconduct generally refers to behavior that is very unpleasant, disgusting, or very rude. This is for the Oxford Advanced Learners and Children. Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act provides that a state officer shall not bully any person. Bullying includes repeated offensive behavior that is vindictive, cruel, malicious, or humiliating, and is intended to undermine a person. For the past two years, His Excellency regarding the Shepherd has persistently bullied state and public officers. To illustrate, A, His Excellency regarding the Shepherd bullied Kenya Medical Supplies Agency officials into awarding a tender for the supply of instruments to Crystal Limited, his proxy company. Crystal Limited has submitted a fake report with the sole intention of fraudulently acquiring public property. B. His Excellency regarding the Shepherd routinely bullies public officials and national security organs 
to be subject to public attacks and humiliation. C. His Excellency Rigadi Gashadwa continually summons procurement officers and ministries and state institutions and instructs them to, di to direct the procurement of goods and services in a particular manner. D. In the presidency, His Excellency Rigadi Gashadwa identified public officers who he thinks stand in his way of creating dominance within government and political leadership, and he has severely threatened, intimidated, and harassed them. E. In 2023, His Excellency Rigadi Gashabra used his position as a deputy president to intimidate public officers and a contractor to divert materials meant for the construction of the Kilifi Malili Road to Tama, a private road to the Pingo Beach Resort, a hotel associated with him. F. His Excellency Rigadi Gashabra uses his constitutional power as deputy president solely to implement sectarian, parochial, and personal interests that seek to profit him. Your Excellency Rigadi Gashabra, how do you plead to ground 11? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <coughs> response to my application for efficiency and expediency permit me also to bring to the attention um, one more uh, application in respect to the documents that were served upon the deputy president mr speaker sir by a letter that you referred to sent from the speaker of the national assembly to the speaker of the senate the Speaker of the National Assembly did submit the documents that emanated from the National Assembly. Also for the Deputy President, take a seat Incompatible 
with the responsibilities of the state office for which results in the impairment or judgment of the state officer in the execution of the functions of the state office or results in a conflict of interest in terms of section 16. As of the actual response, there has been no assertion that Lanet Senior Council James Orengo by representing the party before this house has participated in gainful employment. In any case, what evidence has been tendered before this honorable house to speak to that fact? Mr. Speaker, sir, that is a question that has also received judicial interpretation. If I may, in the election petition number 3 of 2013 filed in the High Court in Busia, similar applications, I mean, a similar application was made, again objecting to the participation of the Honorable James Orego Senior Council in the proceedings in that matter. The judge handling that case interpreted both Article 77 as read with Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and had this to say at paragraph 23, 28, sorry, that it had been argued that by representing a party in an election petition, the Honorable Senator would be compromising the political neutrality of his office. I would not agree. Section 23 of this Act is a provision on political neutrality expected of appointed state officers. Honorable Orengo holds an elective position. Elected members of Senate are politicians. The provisions of Section 23 do not apply uh, to them. So even if it was to be assumed that, the, uh, that by representing their that respondent, Honorable Rango is pursuing a political agenda, that would not be inimical to his office as a member of the Senate. And so, Mr. Speaker, I submit that unless there is material that will be tabled before this House, that by appearing for a party before this House, then the Honorable uh, Mr. James Oren, Senior Counsel, would have engaged, uh, engaged in, uh, in, in uh, gainful employment. That objection does not stand in merit. Number two, the second test that has been applied by courts is the test around conflict of interest. Again, Mr. Speaker, the, our courts have had occasion to interpret what amounts to conflict of interest. In a case determined by a federal bench, a case uh, reported in our laws, that is DKLA 2018, the case of Philomena, Bethlehem Willow versus the DPP and two, uh, two others. The bench, in determining and dismissing a similar application, <coughs> defined conflict of interest as a situation where one is confronted by two different interests to be against the other. Mr. Speaker, there hasn't been any conflict of interest that has been even the least mentioned by uh, the, uh, the objector to the participation of uh, Senior Counsel, the Honorable uh, James Oreco. Has there been an indication as to any prejudice that could be occasioned by the participation of uh, the Honorable James Orenco Senior Counsel for this hour this afternoon. To the best of my collection, of the Honorable James Orenco before the proceedings in this house will be such that they would fundamentally impair their defense when they get the opportunity to present the case. I'm just asking myself, that has not been said. In any case, Mr. Speaker, sir, if that was to be the case and the fear that has been presented, then as advocates, as counsel, we operate within very clear and defined rules. Those rules are meant to ensure that a party before this house, just like would be a party before any court or any other forum, does not suffer or does not have a compromise to that where, uh, rights to fair hearing under Article 50. In the absence of any prejudice that has been mentioned before you, we urge that that objection be dismissed. 
I also had occasion to look at the case that was uh, referred to by my line friend, Mr. Jibu. And with respect, that case stands on two critical points. The first one being that the participation of the Honorable James Borrego as a senator in that matter was said to have had the potential of compromising his participation in the Senate proceedings because then he was a senator. He is not a senator as we speak. So that then marks a significant difference for the pattern between what uh, were left defining in that position and what we have before you. The judges, I mean the judge in that specific matter also went on to add that there must also be established a question or a fact of uh, uh, a benefit. Again, I reiterate that no indication, no evidence, or even assertion has been presented for this house to suggest that the Honorable uh, James Oreco Senior Council has in any way benefited by being in this house participating as council. So with that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we urge that that objection be dismissed and was applied. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. And in brief response to the submissions by my line friend, there is no denial that has come from the from council's defense that senior council Honorable James Orengo is here on pro bono basis. That evidence has not been brought. That claim has not been denied. He's therefore here as counsel earning a fee. And that is what section 26. Mr. Speaker, sir, the only presumption. No, we're not going to presume facts. We're not. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, I am well guided, but may be noted and may go on record that the grounds laid by Section 26, Subsection 2, have not been rebutted by the submissions made by Council insofar as the gainful employment in these proceedings is concerned. Number two, he is here as a governor of Siaya County, not as a senator. And as such, this, the petition number three of 2013 is distinguishable from the fact that he's here as a serving governor. And that is what section 26, subsection two, speaks to and that is also equally the, the provisions of Article 77 of the Constitution. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the test of prejudice is a creation by counsel. It is not the one that at Section 26, Subsection 2, and uh, Article 77 speaks to. The only test is gainful employment. Unless that one is rebutted, rebutted, the general presumption again, your lordship and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and that is a legal presumption. Unless it is rebutted, is that he is here for a main purpose to earn a living, Mr. Speaker, sir. I leave that to the House to make a determination. Permit me once more to move the House with my last and final application. Yeah, in so far as Mr. Speaker, sir, these proceedings are an issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the 8th of October 2020, 2024, this House was served with a resolution from the National Assembly by the Speaker of the National Assembly, vide the letter, the letter that the Speaker of the Senate referred to. That letter, Mr. Speaker, sir, appears at page 547 to 548 of volume 5 of the National Assembly's bundle of documents. 
There is no, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were then served with two sets of documents, an affidavit dated the 11th of October, deponed by one Peterson Jomo Mushira. Our objection, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that that document that affidavit did not form part of the documents that were submitted by the Speaker of the National Assembly to the Speaker of the Senate. It's our argument, Mr. Speaker, sir, that this is new evidence. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were equally served with a banner of document from the National Assembly, which is labeled as Volume 8A which is also indicated as responses from various government agencies. Again, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is new evidence that does not find itself at page 547 to 548 of the bundle of documents submitted to you or to this Honorable House by the Speaker. The prejudice, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that our response was exclusively limited to the documents that we were served with. Further to that, your, your Mr. Speaker, sir, it's our argument and our application that these documents will prejudice our case in the sense that, Mr. Speaker, sir, they will violate our rights to a fair hearing. This is trial by ambush by the National Assembly. It's the tradition of this House, Mr. Speaker, sir, and I refer to the findings of this house in the Honorable Governor Sonko in a ruling delivered by the Speaker of this house on the 17th of December, which ruling barred the County Assembly of Nairobi from introducing any new evidence. It has been the tradition of this House to protect all the parties that appear before it, so that, your, uh, your Mr. Speaker, sir, justice will not only be done, but we also seem to be done. We move this House to have these documents expunged from record, and the, county, the, the National Assembly be barred from relying on these documents. Mr. Speaker, sir, if these documents will be admitted, we shall suffer prejudice in the sense that we shall have no ability or we shall have been denied an opportunity to respond to the same. We urge you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to hold that these documents is new evidence and we rely on Rule 19 of the, this House rules. Noting that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the rules guiding this provision, uh, these proceedings today do not provide for how to deal with new evidence as and when the same is brought to the attention of the House. However, the rules guiding the proceedings in the impeachment of a governor or deputy governor provides that new evidence shall not be admitted. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to bring to your attention the findings in the case uh, in the civil appeal number 21 of 2014 which was the case of Governor Wambora versus the County of uh, Assembly of M. Mr. Speaker, sir, in that case, Justice uh, um, Diek, may the Lord rest his soul in peace, uh, Chief Justice Martha Komi, as then, she, uh, as then was, and Justice Vishram, held that these proceedings of the impeachment of a president or deputy president are paramateria to the impeachment of a governor. That is to say, they are identical. So what applies in those rules in the impeachment of the governor can equally and should equally apply to these rules. And finally, this house being a house of record, then we are bowed by our previous presidents. I am most obliged. Now, also for the National you have uh, one and a half minutes to respond. You may respond now or you may respond after. I could respond. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I could res respond shortly. Under our rules, we have to rise at 1.15.
I'll be able to respond after the line. So all the moment was I will deliver only at 2.30 and then allow the council for the National Assembly to proceed to respond to the second leave of the objection.